Hello my hungry friends! Today we're making a poppy seed cake, just on makove. We have an interesting setup here in Polish Your Kitchen today. I have a whiskey, raisins, and some poppy seeds in here. What do you think we're making, huh? <laughs> we'll be making a unrolled poppy seed roll. Not really, just poppy seed cake. Uh, so we're going to be using the same filling that we use for poppy seed roll, but we're going to make it into, we call it chasto kruche, which is um, the same uh, crust as we use for our apple cake. I don't know how it's called in English. Uh, butter crust, I guess. So here we go. Let's get started. Now I'm using um, my wonderful pastry board that I uh, have for my dad. And I'm going to be going old school today, like grandma used to, without any machinery to make the dough, just to show you how easy it is. So first we are going to soak our poppy seeds. And this is just raw, uh, raw seeds that I have covered with enough water to just have them kind of float around. And they've been soaking for about 10 minutes. And then we have to boil them because they're just still raw. So I'm going to set this in, on my back uh, cooker. And they will be, they have to cook for about 20, 25 minutes. Uh, and so as we're making our dough, they can cook in the back. So I'm just gonna set this back here and just make sure there's enough water in there to cover your poppies and then kind of watch them as they're boiling so they're not too dry. And then we're also gonna be using raisins for our dough, fi not dough filling, yeah, our cake, <laughs> our cake filling. And I have a third of a cup of raisins and you can use uh, whiskey, bourbon, scotch. Uh, Those are all whiskeys. <laughs> so either brandy or a Brand bourbon. Brandy, I was thinking you brandy. You use a sherry, I'm sure. Yeah, or vodka or water if you don't want to use alcohol. But we're, we're just trying to make these soak up a little bit of the liquid so they're not so hard in our dough. So we just do this and then just set it aside for when we're making our filling. So I'm just gonna do this. They need about 10, 10 minutes or so. And then onto our dough. So I have, we're gonna be using about two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. So that's half. One, I have to count so I don't. <laughs> One and a half. Two. And two and a half. And this is a, as, like I was saying, this is a simple crust, uh, we call it butter crust, um, that you, in America, it's normally done for pie. Only you guys do, I think, more savory version and ours is a little bit more sweet. And I have half a cup of powdered sugar. I'll go in here. And I have uh, I'm going to do one teaspoon of baking powder. And our moisture will be one egg, one whole egg and one egg yolk. So I'm just going to make a hole in here, put it in here. And I have, um, so this is 200 grams or 14 tablespoons of cold butter. And make sure your butter is super cold because that's how we want it in the cake. We want a little tiny bits of butter to kind of be left behind while baking. So they kind of melt into your crust and they, they kind of create these pockets of, of delicious soft buttery crust. So I'm just cutting them into kind of a smaller pieces. It doesn't really matter how big. But you gotta watch out how much you handle with your fingers like, right. right beforehand, otherwise you can get Yeah, you don't want to. And then we're gonna just put this in here into our our uh, mountain of of dough, and I'm just swirling the eggs a little bit in here. And just kind of slicing it together. If you find 
that your eggs aren't big enough to handle this much flour. Uh, give it a little bit of time first, obviously, but you can also add a dollop of uh, sour cream. So bring a little bit of moisture to your dough. So I'm gonna I'll use my hands a little bit just to break up that butter a little bit. And this will start forming our dough shortly. As the butter melts a little bit. And it's quite easy, huh? Like falling off a log. Like falling off a log. And I, I very rarely do this anymore where you make the dough on your board. But every time I do, it kind of reminds me of what grandma used to do. Massage the dough like this, and it's nice to have this large surface of um, of uh, a board like this. But you can definitely do it on the counter. I don't know if you've noticed, I'm not wearing an apron today. I'm a kielbasa eater today. This is an apron for our from our merch store. If you want to head over and take a look. Go to polishyourkitchen.com and have a tab up at the top. I'll take you to our merch store. You can see um, what do we have in there. Have long sleeve sweatshirts like this, and t shirts, and aprons, and tank tops, and one, coffee mugs. Onesies for little kids. Get these little bits and bobs off the bottom. And this is forming nicely. This is a dough that doesn't really like to be worked a lot. So like, I think, I, I feel this is, we're getting to a point where I don't want to knead it anymore, but I do want it to kind of come together. So just as, as little as possible, clump it to make a dough. And unlike yeasted dough that likes to, kind of the gluten to be worked out and the eggs to be uh, well incorporated into the dough. This is, we kind of just want it to come together. Sorry, my voice is still recovering from, from, from illness. We're, we're, we're getting there, okay. See, I didn't even need any more flour for it because it doesn't really stick that much. Why are you laughing at me? Because you're getting a workout over there. I'm, not, I am. I'm just relaxing and enjoying myself. I am. <laughs> I am getting workout for sure. Okay. And now they're saying that you're supposed to chill your dough, but I don't like doing that in a, in a ball like this because then it's really hard to uh, roll out afterwards. So. There's two, two ways I do this. So I either refrigerate it like this in the bowl, wrap it, put it in the fridge, because we have to make our filling anyway, so this can chill. But another way is to put it in your form like this and then chill it. That way it's not so hard and um, to roll it out later. So that's what I'm gonna do. I've lined mine, this is, we're gonna be using nine by nine inch pan. And I just lined this much of it, leaving this exposed, which I need to get some butter to, to uh, just butter these sides. So our dough doesn't stick, even though we can just grab the paper and transfer it. But just to be safe, let's, if you have any exposed uh, edges, give them a nice layer of, of butter. And then, nope, wrong one. <laughs> and then you can just go like this. Oh, no, 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 wait. See, I almost did it wrong. So <laughs> this is our bottom and this is our top layer as well. So we need to cut away about uh, a third and, and also there's several ways to kind of decide how much you want to cut away. Today I'm just going to do, I'm going to cover portion of the top. So you can do it my way or see how it turns out and then decide how you want to do it. 
Uh, and then for this part, I gotta get some parchment. That was a nice trick for, for that as well. And then you put it on your parchment. Well, I need two parchments. So I, I need to, you know, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> and you uh, roll with your rolling pin through over the paper. You roll it into the shape of your pan. Because if we did it on the on the on the wooden surface or on your counter or whatever, this would just stick. It's really sticky dough, and we don't want that. So you roll through paper. I can smell my poppy seeds back here to a thickness that will cover your uh, your container plus up the sides. And it's as even as possible all across, all across the surface. And this is definitely an easy version. If you ever made poppy seed roll, you will know that this is definitely an easy version. And then you take one layer off, and you take your second layer, and you can flip it, and no one will even... There we go. And you take this layer, <laughs> and then kind of make it even, down all the way down to the bottom. And then if you are overhanging, just take these pieces and fill your gaps. Well, I, I can imagine that some people would maybe want to do this in a, I'm going to add this here, in a pie crust, right? Yeah. But, but for me, the filling a pie in a pie, uh, yeah, in a pie pan, but I feel that cutting a dough or a cake once it's done like this out of a pie would kind of be a little harder because the filling is kind of crumbly as well. So I've just gone around and I tore this, the pieces that are kind of overhanging my edges. And here we go. Now I'm gonna just wrap this in plastic and cover this also in plastic so the world doesn't get to it. And I'm gonna put it in the fridge and then we're gonna go and make our filling. Or all, we're gonna actually stay and make our filling. <laughs> Next, we make our filling. So uh, my puppies were cooking on the stove for about 20, 25 minutes. They don't really look any different. Maybe there's a little bit more. Uh, they look like there's more in the volume. Just drain the water a little bit. Let them sit on a uh, strainer like this for a few minutes and just kind of shake it off. And then we're gonna be grinding it on your smallest grinding plate or the one with the smallest um, holes and we have to do it twice. So let's get, yes. What if you don't have a grinder? Yeah, it's kind of a problem if you don't have a grinder. Can they make pre-made poppy seed filling? You can, uh, you can buy a, sometimes in the Polish deli, you can definitely buy a filling in a can and you can use that for this cake. Um, I wouldn't recommend the ones that you buy in American grocery stores. Those poppies aren't cooked and they're not ground up. So you have these big chunks, not big chunks, just the poppies aren't processed correctly, in my opinion, for this particular dough. And they're really sticky and <laughs> very sugary. So go I, to bachik.com. Yeah, you can go to Bachik, our friends at Bachik, I'm sure sell it online. Go to, um, I think their website is, well one, bachik.com and they'll have a link to their store, but they carry some of the Polish brands and those are really good. So, but if you don't have a grinder, um, I guess go get one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, 
I want to show you the difference between this and this is just single grind. You can tell right away that these little, I don't know what you call them, the little grains, I guess, of poppies or poppy seeds are being broken up and they're not gonna, they're gonna taste completely different. I'm gonna get the flavor out of the seed and it kind of becomes more of a, a masa. What do you call masa? Like more like a dough kind of texture, not just granular single seeds. So this is why we were grinding it twice. Our poppies were uh, ground twice and then now they're nice and soft and kind of uh, squishy. <laughs> Technical term. <laughs> yeah, so we, now we have to kind of uh, spruce up our, yeah, spruce up our filling, I guess, I don't know. Uh, so we're gonna do, uh, so, so this is 50 grams of butter. Can't remember what it is in, in ounces, but recipe at Polsha Kitchen, you can go there and uh, check it out. Uh, so I'm just melting this a little bit in here and probably on low. We don't want the butter burning too much, we just want to heat it up. And then you're going to add your, just, I'm going to give this a minute. Also going to add two tablespoons of honey. This is nice and sweet filling. That's why our dough is not super sweet. And just be careful not to burn your honey as well. So just keep it on kind of low. So we have honey and then we have sugar and we have those raisins that were um, soaking in bourbon or in whiskey, whatever we used, I don't even know. Can't tell the difference really, to be honest. <laughs> and then I'm gonna add our poppies to it and they're gonna pick up this gorgeous moisture from the butter and the honey and kind of become less crumbly and not so dry. I want this, not, this doesn't have to really cook. I'm gonna add the sugar and if you think this is a little too much sugar for you, feel free to lower the amounts a little bit. How much sugar was it? Well, this was half a cup of sugar. Just give this a stir and just keep it on low until, until we can get this uh, sugar melted a little bit. So uh, there's that. And then I have uh, walnuts, which I need to chop. I have a third of a cup. So as you can see, these are, I'm gonna add these here as well. All of the ingredients are the same as we would put in uh, our rolled uh, Makovits, our rolled poppy seed roll or poppy seed cake. And I'm just gonna give, give these kind of a slice. All right, and these will go into our filling. Does it smell like Christmas? It does smell like Christmas. <laughs> I was thinking that. Like you're, 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 my senses think it's spring, but then I smell it and it's Christmas, but then it's spring. Yeah. I don't know what to think anymore. <laughs> okay, so give this a good stir. Uh, make sure your sugar is nice and melted, and then we're gonna have to cool it a little bit and then continue with our, uh, with our filling. Give this uh, probably a good 15, 20 minutes. If it's cool outside, feel free to take it outside to kind of speed up your process a little bit. Our filling is cooled enough to uh, continue with our, um, our filling, cake, whatever <laughs> words. <laughs> so I have the egg whites that uh, we didn't use for our dough. 
and I'm gonna put those in here. I'm also gonna add one more egg white, but keep the egg yolk. And we're gonna use the egg yolk for brushing on top of our, um, our dough to make it nice and kind of golden brown. And we're gonna whisk these with a pinch of salt until stiff. Stiff? Yes, ma'am. Stiff. And then we're gonna take our egg whites and we're gonna gently fold them into the rest of our uh, filling. And if you're using a um, the, the store-bought filling, I would recommend doing this as well, or adding egg whites uh, to your uh, canned filling because it's gonna uh, provide a little bit of the, fluff, of, of the fluffiness that egg whites will um, kind of make the dough rise a tiny bit when it's being cooked, which will just not be so dense, I guess. So just gently folding this in here makes the dough a little bit more moist. Our dough was just resting in the fridge, so this will now go right on top. As you notice, we're not baking this ahead of time. Should bake just fine in our with our filling. Our filling is not that wet. And just kind of distribute it evenly here. And this fills our nine by nine pan quite nicely, doesn't it? And now we can get uh, as fancy as we want, or as basic, I guess, as we want with the rest of our dough. But I was kind of thinking to do a little bit uh, fancier finish for it today. And I wish I rolled this out before as well. So we're gonna take uh, another two pieces of parchment. And I think I'm gonna get rid of this board. Now we're gonna roll this out a little bit. You can start your oven on to 400 Fahrenheit and about 200 Celsius. Whoa, I'm all moving all around my kitchen. And then roll this out. <laughs> this is why I don't like doing it with cold dough, stupid cold dough. And I wanna roll this out to about the same thickness as the bottom of my dough is so it cooks kind of evenly. And by the way, I have done this dough, or this cake, uh, plenty of times, and almost always don't refrigerate the dough. But, so likewise, you refrigerate this type. but Jamie Oliver says yeah, peer pressure. that you have to refrigerate this type of dough. So you can do what you want, but it's, it's pretty, it's pretty normal to refrigerate kind of this sugar cookie dough. So, but as, as I said, you do what you'll do. And I won't be mad at you either way. So that's about the thickness I want. It's about kind of the same as here. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a cookie cutter and I just happen to have the star. Maybe it's 4th of July coming or something. And cut out these stars. You can do whatever shape you want, doesn't matter. You can just lay this on top and don't do anything as well. But here, post your kitchen, we're fancy as you can tell by my outfit today. So we're gonna do fancy things and cut out stars. And if it's 4th of July weekend, this will come in really nicely. I kinda wanna do irregular, so I'm gonna go from here and kinda see what happens. And then when you have these little bits left, you can 
make cookies out of it because the dough is exactly the same as you would use for sugar cookies and I have a recipe for those on my page as well so my grandma's sugar cookies are the best absolute best they're kind of buttery and crumbly and gorgeous and you can't substitute by store-bought ever I wish I had a smaller star to go in between but this will do what do you think it looks beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna do maybe like this. Oh, you get double up your dough. It's okay. Whoa. We'll do half a star. That's what my teacher always gave me. You half a star? Half a star. Oh, you're full star in my eyes, my love. Aww. You get double stars. <laughs> and I have this dough <laughs> that's sticking up a little bit, and I don't want it burning, so I'm just gonna bring it down a little bit. I'm kind of making a decorative dough. Maybe I'll do another half a star or half a shape to kind of cover a little bit more of this area here. We don't have to have all of our, um, uh, what you call it, filling covered. It'll look pretty. And then I'll take my yolk and scramble it with this brush a little bit. And this will give us a nice kind of brown, super delicious looking dough on top. And I've done this with egg white as well, so, you know, kind of do whatever. It's only cook, it's only cooking. We're not brain surgery, you know, we can relax a little bit, right? I'm relaxed. All right, and this will go in our oven. And I know the temperature, or not temperatures, time of cooking will vary a little bit. I find that European ovens uh, cook a little bit faster because we have the um, induction uh, option on there. But this will need about 45, 50 minutes. And I'm also going to form some stars out of this. And we will taste our cake. Look at my gorgeous cake. I'm just loosening up the edges that were not lined with paper. And I'm gonna lift. we're ready for liftoff. Ooh. Can you say ooh? ooh. <clears throat> And cut. Lucy knows something is nope, happening. <laughs> Look. Lucy, you don't like cake. Nice, eh? Beautiful. And so much easier than rolling your dough and hoping it doesn't split, which I have a recipe that won't split. So go to Polish Your Kitchen and check out the poppy seed roll and the poppy seed cake recipes. Let's try this. The filling is a little crumbly, which is fine. It's a little warm still. Um, the taste of poppy seed roll, only it's a lot easier to make. Yep. Nice and sweet. It's not too sweet. Um, which we, us Poles, don't really over sugar things, I don't, I don't think. I hope you make this at home soon. And I hope you visit us again and subscribe and help our channel grow and help spread the word and love of everything Poland. We'll see you next time. Smacznego!